Hello there, my name is James Coomer, and today I bring you my Senior Capstone video on Innovative Technologies. I will be talking about the Apple Watch, the Samsung Gear S2, and the Fitbit Blaze. Starting with the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch is priced either at $299 or $349, depending on the model you want. The model is just a couple millimeters different than the other for an extra $50. The Apple Watch was released on April 24, 2015, and it was created by Kevin Lynch and his team at Apple. Lynch was the chief technology officer before he accepted the job at Apple. And he was the chief technology officer at Adobe. Lynch was tasked with creating a revolutionary device that could be worn on the wrist. This device would turn out to be the Apple Watch. The goal of the Apple Watch was to free people from their phones. And this is a little bit ironic since the iPhone pretty much started everybody on their phones. And the watch isn't just a cool way to make phone calls, it is also a fashion statement. And we will go over more about this later on. So, what can the Apple Watch do? To turn on the watch, all you do is raise your wrist. This is pretty easy, anybody can do this. Turn off the watch, all you do is lower your wrist. Again, super easy. Anybody can do it. Next, we're going to talk about the digital crown. The digital crown, as shown by the arrow here and the pointer, is compared to the click wheel from the iPod. This will be pretty much any of the iPods from before, like the iPod Nanos. And the digital crown is used to scroll and to get to the home screen. So all you do here is you can just turn the digital crown, that will be your scrolling, or you push in and that's how you get to the home button. As you can see right here, this is the home screen. Now everything that the Apple Watch has is pressure sensitive displays. This is needed because elsewise it would be cluttered because then there would be too much on the screen. So you could be talking with somebody and you can just press the screen and it gives you more options. This is known as force touch. Next we're going to talk about tap. So what is tap? Tap <clears throat> is the vibration that you feel when you receive a notification on your Apple Watch. This vibration comes from any messages, phone calls, and notifications that you may get. And just like turning it on, you can raise your wrist to look at a message and then lower your wrist to dismiss that message. Also, with messaging, you can send your heart rate. That is pretty interesting because obviously before you were never able to send your heart rate in a text message. On to the watch face. The watch face can be customized to make it more personal. As you see here, this is just a couple of the ways your watch face can look. There are tons of things you can do. You can show the weather, you can have the time obviously, you can have date, you can have sunset, <coughs> you can even have alarms. Each watch face is customized to how you like it. Each person usually will have a dis different watch face. On to the activity app. The activity app is very useful for the Apple Watch and it's what makes it very popular for people wanting to do exercises. The activity app is an app that's available on the Apple Watch and it can help you live a better day by achieving three daily fitness goals. These goals include standing up for at least one minute every hour, hitting your goal for burning calories for the day, 
and accumulating at least 30 minutes of activity. Now these 30 minutes of activity have to be more than a brisk walk. And your goal for burning calories, you can change that from day to day. It is not a set goal. These are all things you can change. The activity app also gives encouraging reminders to continue working towards your goals for the day. And all information that you get here will be stored in the health app on your iPhone. Making and receiving phone calls. You can mute a phone call by putting your hand over the watch. Say so you get a phone call from someone you don't want to talk to at the moment. You can just put your hand over it and then the call is over. You can also scroll down on the screen and transfer your call to the iPhone. So if you don't want to use your watch to make a call, you can just then transfer it to your iPhone instead. Or you can also make Siri call for you. And that is really interesting and innovative. The one thing with the Apple Watch is you must have an Apple product, Apple iPhone, 5S or newer, or it will not work. The Apple Watch will not work with any Android products, only Apple products. And watch bands. The Apple Watch has the capabilities for interchangeable watch bands. So you can have a watch band for any day of the week. You can have seven different watch bands for each day of the week. And a different watch band can make it look and feel like you have a different Apple Watch. This is a great strategy because you may think, oh, I'm not really a fan of this product anymore. Just wait, I'm going to change my watch band. Like, hey, this looks like a new product. I really like it. And it helps that way people don't return the item. Going on to their main competitors, the Samsung Gear S2. This is priced from $299 or $349.99. And it has a standard touchscreen on the GS2 when compared to the Apple Watch. You, it does not have the, the touch display or the force touch that the Apple Watch had. Samsung first released their smartwatch as the Galaxy Gear in 2013, but it was not really received well by the market. People believed that it was made nicely, the quality was there, they just didn't like the overall product. The Gear 2 was revealed in February 2014, and that had much better success than the Galaxy Gear. But then the real thing right now is the Gear S2, which was released October 2nd, 2015. And here are the three models you can get. So what can the Gear do? The Gear S2 is compatible with, the mo with most Android smartphones. Calls, messaging, email, and Wi-Fi sync is limited on Android phones that are not Samsung Galaxy phones. So you might not have the best experience without having a Samsung Galaxy phone. The Gear also has a rolling bezel, which allows you to scroll through options and menus. The arrow points to it. It's this whole thing around here. The bezel makes it more possible that you have less scratches and smudges on the screen because you're using this to scroll through options and menus. The Samsung Gear also has wireless charging capabilities and it has S Voice which is Samsung's version of Siri. You can ask to make a phone call and S Voice will make the phone call for you. Customizable walk faces so just like the Apple Watch, Gear 2 has custom watch faces. This also allows you to express yourself for all occasions. As you can see, here are some examples of possible watch faces. What I thought was pretty cool was the 3G and 4G capabilities. The 
Gear S2 has 3G and 4G capabilities, which means it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be connected to a phone to make phone calls. So you can just have the uh, uh, the S2 on your wrist, and you don't need a phone. But you do need to have a wireless plan for the watch. That's the only downside. Moving on. The activity app. The activity app is found on the S2 and the Gear S2 has apps that help with health and fitness. These include Pulse, which measures your pulse to determine the intensity of your workout, activity tracking, that is pretty standard and easy to understand. Also 24 hour overview. It shows you what you've accomplished over the last 24 hours. So right here we have Pulse, activity tracking, and the 24 hour overview. Moving on to the last thing we're talking about is the Fitbit Blaze. The Fitbit Blaze is priced at $199.95 and here are some examples of the Fitbit Blaze. This was just released this year in 2016 and it is Fitbit's version of the Apple Watch. As you can tell, the screen looks kind of like what you'd see on the Apple Watch. <clears throat> so what does the Fitbit do? The Fitbit has many features. The first, which is pure pulse heart rate, also has on-screen workouts. These give you step-by-step -step instructions and coaching right from the Fitbit. Connected GPS. This connects you with the GPS on your phone to map your routes and see stats like your pace and the duration that you are exercising. Color touchscreen, call, text, and calendar. Smart track. This is where Fitbit Blaze uses Smart Track to automatically recognize and record exercises for you. So if you were to forget to log in that you did some exercise, this Smart Track will do it for you. Multi sport. This gives options from running, biking, and cardio, and many more, and lets you see real-time stats on display. The Fitbit also has a long battery life. It has a battery life up to five days, but that can change due to use of the Fitbit. What I found very interesting about the Fitbit was the part about getting the best rest. The Fitbit Blaze has auto sleep tracking, and this allows you to track your time asleep and the time that you are restless during the night. The information will then be found on your phone the next day. The Fitbit also offers silent alarms. You can set an alarm on the Fitbit app to get a silent vibration in the morning from the Fitbit on your wrist. This way, you don't have to have loud noises waking you up the vibration from the Fitbit will wake you up instead. Well that's all I have for you today. I want to thank you for watching my video and also just want to make sure that you know that none of the images I present in the video are mine. I do not own them in any way. Thanks for your time.